All right, everybody, welcome to the Multifamily Legacy Podcast. This is your host, Corey Peterson. I've got a great interview today. I uh, We just had uh, Brian Ponciano, BP, on a couple weeks ago, and so I asked him to come back because I really wanted him to tell his full story because the guy's got an amazing heart, and he's got an amazing story, and he just closed a a pretty good size apartment complex deal. He's excited about it. And I just really want to share the message because this is a guy who really started from the bottom and he had a huge drive and a huge why. And, you know, he had what I feel like is a self, um, he had some self doubts in the beginning, like we all do. And, and so, t- you know, it takes a little time and a little courage and a whole lot of like, I want to get there attitude and BP just, he just exudes that in this, in this talk. So, um, I will get it. There's quick warning, 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 warning. BP doesn't give a bleep, 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 bleep. And so I'm not going to bleep it out, but, um, he is who he is. And, um, he speaks from the heart, but, uh, he's got, um, colorful language and um, but it, he is an awesome, awesome dude. So I want to welcome Brian Ponciano, BP. Get ready. Here with my boy BP, better known as Brian Ponciano. <laughs> Depends on who you ask. Depends on who you ask. Yeah, uh, we got a really cool uh, episode today. We're gonna talk about man. Me and Brian, we go way back. Like, yes, way back. So um, when I first met you, you were doing bandit signs in fact i hired you to do my bandit signs <laughs> that is correct and like you've like totally started and just like i'm gonna figure some things out mm-hmm. and and you've been paying attention and dude you just bought a like your first apartment complex yeah i'm closing on that on the third of january so i'm closing on my very first apartment complex on the third of january no money out of my pocket that's how it's done yes yes the big kahuna way <laughs> <laughs> right on so, so yeah no as you mentioned i did start with bandit signs i had um i had started in the industry in 2006 made my first chunk of change right at the end of 2006 2007 right towards the end of 2007 really started losing my ass because we were doing a lot of the pre-foreclosure stuff so we were starting to see the market slow down before it started tanking right uh, on that end so yeah I, by the end like 2007 i had already lost my ass 2008, I went back to corporate America. 2009, I said, fuck this. I'm never going to go back America to corporate sucks, America. Right? Oh, it's horrible. Now, yeah. hey, there's a warning right now. I'm going to put a little warning. <laughs> Why did we do this from this, the beginning? This is a G, <laughs> this normally G-rated show. Uh, at least that's what I clicked on when I, when I did it on iTunes. Okay. So, Well, I will I will keep it to a bare minimum. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, uh, he kind of doesn't give a bleep, bleep, bleep. <laughs> but, um... He's as genuine as genuine and real as real gets, and so, um, and I think honestly that's what's like missing in, like, when I call gurus. Yeah. I mean, who the hell's guru, right? But they're all narcissists, man. Yeah. If you really look at a lot of them out there, they're freaking narcissists. It's all about them. Mm-hmm. Check out my Lambo. Uh, you know, check out this. I got this. It is, yeah. and it, and I mean, I've noticed from a marketing standpoint, that's how you sell the dream. And, you know, it's one way to sell the dream. Well, of course, but that's how the masses receive the dream. Well, the people that like, um, well, I I remember housewives and exactly. um, Well, I remember growing up because I grew up poor. I grew up extra poor. You know, we we grew up in the ghetto and we looked at our heroes, which were artists and ball players and, you know, athletes and stuff. And people on TV. Yeah, exactly. And then you look at them and you're like, okay, well, this is what I'm supposed to do when I have money. When I have money, I'm supposed to just blow it on. I'm supposed to just show show off, go, you know, be like, hey, look at all my poor friends. You guys are still poor. I'm rich. Ha ha ha. Look at that. So and and it becomes kind of like this thing that attracts you to it. Yeah. So eventually I've noticed a lot of that with the with the gurus here. It's not even about the content that they're putting out. It's more about, hey, check out me. You know, don't you want what I have? And I I just want to be a part of it. I was like, let me just pay you to be a part of it. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Yeah. Just to like live out your dreams through you. I don't know. So but let's talk about like your your whole story. I want to like go back and you you kind of talked about your past, but I really want to get everybody to like a good understanding of who BP is mm-hmm. and, and who BP was and who he is now. Because even, in, I remember, you came to my house like 
five years five ago. Five years ago, yeah. we had a little talk in my office, mm -hmm. right? And we yeah. and and I remember specifically, you probably remember better, but I was like, dude, you gotta figure out OPM. I'm like, it'll change your life. Yes. And the message you heard the message, but it didn't really sink in until the last couple of years. In the last couple of years though, everything's taken off. You've changed. And and one of the things about that is that I agreed with the message when I first heard it, yep. but because of my background, because of coming from poverty, OPM was just something that was completely out of the thing. Right. <laughs> so uh, OPM, other people's money. And uh, I grew up poor. Uh, I grew up, there. I had, none of my family had money. Yeah. None of our friends had money. Nobody that we knew in church had money. There was absolutely nobody. And when I'm talking about having money, like I'm talking about most of these people don't even have to this day probably $1,000 in their bank account. <laughs> straight you know, like up, straight. Dude. No, yeah. for real, for real. Yeah. Uh -huh. and, 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 you know, I include my, you met my mother a few days ago. Yeah. And she's a lovely lady, but I include her in the same picture I, I i'm almost certain that to this day my mom has less than a thousand dollars in her bank account yeah so my parents were immigrants from uh, guatemala they came i was born in a small town in louisiana believe it or not okay um, very small town up, up by lafayette louisiana um i was born up in that area um we moved to los angeles when i was about a year old because we had my parents had family out there okay and then i grew up in the south side of la so i grew up in a town called southgate um a lot of people are familiar with a town called compton yeah. because of how bad it is yeah. well southgate was a mexican version of compton and we were literally across the train tracks i grew up when i was a little kid um in um uh linwood which is yes no right linwood was on the other side of southgate yeah yeah so linwood was on the other side of the freeway from I was Southgate. Born, i was born in linwood <laughs> and for for all those like anybody that remembers west coast uh, 90s rap yeah, was, was known as gangster rap uh that was all true and that was all going on in my neighborhood I, I saw kids literally get into fist fights and bloody noses and everything at the age of like, you know, 10 years old, fifth grade. Wow. People like fighting over gangs and stuff. Yeah. And they were kids, but we didn't yeah. know any better. So, you know, we moved out here and luckily for me, um, the change kind of helped me see the scenery a little yeah. bit more, but we were still poor. Yeah. So getting into real estate was just something that was completely just a dream to me yeah. at one point. Yeah, probably no support from the family because they had no idea. No, right? no, no support. No, yeah. none, I mean, none like, they're like, what do you do? Like, you're supposed to go to school. Yes. I remember that I got, I think I was 19 or so, and I got a job at Ross, working yeah. at Ross. I think I was making like seven fifty an hour, and my parents and my, my uncles and stuff, they're like, oh, that's a good job. That's such a good job. And I'm like, no, it's not. This job sucks. Like, this fucking blows. <laughs> but in their mind, it was a good job because I wasn't out on the, I wasn't working construction. Right. Or I wasn't working in a warehouse somewhere. Yeah. So just because I got to, you know, you dress up semi-nice in retail, now you're like, oh, that's a good job. And, and I started noticing as I progressed in my age, like, dude, this blows. This, there's got to be a lot more to it. Yeah. Um, but the crazy thing about it is that once you grow up poor, it, it really programs you to stay poor. And it pro my, my parents and, and... Dude, I... Man, okay. So, because I grew up poor, too. <laughs> yeah. But I'm a country poor. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I mean, poor is poor. But, yeah, but, but you're right. Poor is poor, right? And it's really... Funny thing, but it's our thinking. It's the mental poorness, yeah. Yeah, it's like we never talked about money at the table. Mm -hmm. No, no, hell no. Um, and, like, I, I remember going, like, to McDonald's, and we never, like, going to McDonald's was a treat, by yeah, the way. Yeah, yeah, well, fuck right? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then it would be like, go sit down with your brothers and sisters, and we never got to order, mm -hmm. and we get a hamburger and split your fries, yeah. small fries. Yeah, basically, we had... um. <laughs> My, da waters. There was my no dad had this this joke that we're like, hey, dad, we want to go out to eat. So he would grab our plate and fucking stick it out outside of the front door and said, there you know, you're out to eat. Now go ahead and fucking <laughs> eat your food. <laughs> like, yeah, going out to eat was just something that was not even <laughs> concept. But, you know, to take it a step further, we lived, you know, we had running water and everything growing yeah. up. Uh, even though we did grow up poor, it was a, the U.S. version of poor, right? right. Uh -huh. My yeah, parents yeah. grew up poor, yeah. poor, which is like yeah. Latin go to, American go to version of poor. Go to the yeah. Philippines, right? Exactly. And, and, and just so you know, BP is... Filipino. <laughs> I'm Guatemalan. Oh, not Filipino. Guatemalan. Your wife is Filipino. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but for but the, you love the, the Filipino food. Oh, though. I love the Filipino food. And the thing is, is that Filipinos are nothing more than uh, Latin Asians, which yeah. and their their Latin their base is uh, in Spanish anyway. So we're yeah. like cousins anyway. Yeah. <laughs> but my mom used to make us take a shower with a bucket and a bowl. Even though we had running water, even though we actually had a shower, she wanted us to know how it was to be poor. And, and in her mind, she thought she was doing something good. Now, as I grow up and as an older, I'm like, fuck, that really programmed me to be a poor person. 
to really think poverty. Right. So eventually, as you I gotta be so appreciative of anything that's 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 not like yeah standard for everybody else. Exactly. Right? Like we're supposed to be so appreciative. Oh, you know, please, please and thank yous, please and thank yous, which is still nice, right? Yeah. But sometimes you just gotta be like, listen. I'm rolling in this thing. There's a fine balance, and, I, and I've noticed this a lot from traveling recently. There's a fine balance between being confident and being humble. Yeah. And, and a lot of times, Americans come off as complete arrogant because we don't know how we, you know, we're, we're so in our little American bubble that you, could, you don't know how it is to be outside of the United States and how it is for other people to do it. However... How good we really have. Yeah, it. exactly. However, though... When you go to some of these countries and you see that these people could never think outside of the box, it's all about how hard can I work and how what can I get with the fruit of my labor. Yeah. And that's actually like it's it's ingrained to us as Hispanic, as Hispanic men. It's ingrained to us like you know you're proud, we're proud of our hard work. You know, look at those guys. They're you know they're always there making money without having to work. Ah, oh, those guys those guys are fucking idiots. Like you know we're we're really really proud of our work. So we have to really be proud of yeah. what we do. Yeah. So I, you know eventually I um. I always I kept on watching the infomercials. I saw the Carlton Sheet stuff, the no money down stuff. Um, I was like, I want to get into real estate. I want to get into real estate. I want to get into real estate. I was doing sales at the time, and eventually I I, um, I ended up at this small little lot that sold mobile homes, and it was for Bisbee Homes. I'm not even sure if that's still a company around. Right. But basically, I sat there and I waited for people to show up to the thing. And then I walked them in through these crappy little mobile home uh, models during the summer with no air conditioning, yes. trying to get them, convince them to, yes. to buy. And, and most of these people didn't even have two pennies to rub together. Right. We're trying to get them to buy, to buy a piece of land and get this thing installed and everything else. Right. And that, was, oh, yeah. that was horrible. So I had nothing to do but to sit there, and I started going on Craigslist. And eventually I found this, this ad where this guy said, hey, I'm a real estate investor. I'm looking to do training. Now, I had come across those ads a lot. Um, there used to be a group back in the day called Nuva Reach, and they used to, that's the way that they yeah, were advertised. Uh -huh, yeah. And then they, they sold, uh, you know, there were these gurus and they sold education and stuff like that. But this particular guy put up the ad. I said, you know what? Let me go. It's most likely going to be another Nuva Reach pitch, but I got nothing to lose. Let right. me go see. So I called the guy. He's like, hey, look, man, I'm, I'm a for reals guy. I'm, I'm starting. And you know who this was? Um, Derek Jar. You know that name, Derek Jar? He's with Green Street Community. Oh, yeah. 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 So he was the first guy that ever hired me to work for him. Oh, wow. Uh, this was back in the day. So he had, um, Derek Jar used to be partners with this guy named Troy Funk, and they had something called cutting deals back in the day. Yep. Um, Derek started noticing Troy was about to self-sabotage, so he's like, I need to get the hell out of here and just kind of separate. Right. So at that point, he's like, I'm going to start from nothing. I got this little crappy office in Old Town Scottsdale. I'm not going to pay you guys anything. It's just strictly door knocking. I'm going right. to give you door knocking opportunities. And the first person that ever took me door knocking was a guy named Brian North, who now owns North & Co., one of the most prestigious, biggest freaking um, brokerages here in town. <laughs> it's crazy. That's, that's huh? funny, right? <laughs> crazy. All hustling. All hustling. All hustling. So he, they took me door knocking. And uh, for you guys who don't know what door knocking is, it's exactly what it sounds. Yeah. <laughs> they give you a list. Look, so this, here's what it was. This was 2007. He, everybody's riding high on the horse. Everybody's like, yeah, we're, real estate's oh, going to continue great. going up. This is yes. awesome. And then you had a list of people that were going to go through foreclosures. And I literally would go knock on their door, doom, 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 doom. Hey, uh, your house is about to be foreclosed on. You've been, you've missed the last six months of payment. Yeah. <laughs> and you would get a lot of go F Dude, yourselves, yeah, yeah. shut what the, the door. Yeah, you don't know me. You, you don't know, yeah. yeah. Um, you would get a lot of denial. You don't know what you're talking about. I already took care of that. That's a mistake. Uh, and, you know, and a lot of times you knew that that was crap. You knew that that was They're a lot of crap. They're just trying to get you out the door. Exactly. But it, it, it grew the metaphorical hair on your peaches. But, <laughs> <laughs> It did. It, it, you, you call it cutting teeth. You call it whatever you want to call it, but it it made your skin thicker. Yes. So, I mean, back when I opened up Edward Jones' office, mm -hmm. right? And so one of the, I call it the gauntlet, right? Because it will separate the wheat from the chaff. Yeah. Oh, right? yeah. And you have to go in a suit and tie, door knocking, mm -hmm. almost every day for like the first year of your business, yeah. right? That's how you get clients. Mm -hmm. And so... A quality contact was a name, an address, and a phone number. So you're already at the address, so it's yeah. not, that's not hard to figure out, right? <laughs> but dude, the swamp ass that you would get, dude. Man. I mean, Goldbond was my friend. And I and I and I had a, you know, I had mentioned to you this before, but before I even got into 
real estate. I used to do business to business sales. So it was yeah. the same thing. I used to come suit tie and we used to sell crap. I mean, it was literally attache bags, uh, lighters, coloring books, right. water guns, you know, right. whatever crap that yeah. we could put in there. So then, so you got, so you got some education and then that led you to bandit signs? Well, what ended up happening was I ended up making money uh, on the market when it went up. Okay. And then 2008, I lost my right. butt. Right. The and I went crashed. back to I went back yeah. to corporate America. I had a good job. I was making benefits and 401ks. And I'm looking at yeah, everybody. That good job is. Oh, right. my God. And I'm looking at everybody, man, and they're miserable. Yeah. And the guy who used to be my manager, his name was Jim Wooten or something like that. And he was amazing. He was a badass. Dude, they would literally send him from crappy store to crappy store to fix it. But he was never going to be more than a manager because he rode a Harley. He had a goatee and he fuck he, he liked chewing tobacco. You know, he was just one of those type of guys. But he was amazing. And his boss was a complete freaking idiot, but he was a kiss ass. He was the biggest brown nosing kiss ass that I've ever seen in my life. And, and I'm looking at here and I'm looking at the situation. And Jim has been working for this company for 10 years with no future to seeing go past the manager. And I said, I'm not going to be in a company for 10 yeah. years All to be a manager. Yeah, you looked up, you're like, is that, what the, is that the model? Is that what it looks yeah. like? You're like, oh, hell no. No, hell no. And and what happened was at that point, I said, you know what? I'm going to go back into real estate. Like, yeah. I don't know what I'm going to do. I, I didn't even know. So I had, my mom used to clean houses for this guy who was a real estate broker. Um, she had told him about me. He wanted to have a meeting. So I sat down. I had a meeting with him at his office. He's like, you're amazing. You're going to make a whole lot of money. Right. So I actually, I went to go get my license. And, and as soon as I got my license, I called this guy's number. Doo -doo -doo, this number has been disconnected. <laughs> so I had already quit my job at that point. I had already said, you know what? I'm gonna go back into real estate. So from my previous experience of working with this guy, Derek, the people that I worked with, I realized that a lot of them use bandit signs, but none of them wanted to place their own bandit signs. Right, because it's a pain in the butt. It's a pain in the butt. Everybody thinks of it, oh, it's just really simple. You just stick them on the ground. No, it doesn't work that way, especially here in Arizona. No. No. So my, I, my first my first experience with bandit signs, and this is why I ended up calling you, <laughs> I went to an education thing, yeah. and they said, put up bandit signs. So I go get some wooden stakes. <laughs> I get some cardboard, some just loose cardboard, like the heaviest gauge yes. I could find, but it was flapping in the wind. Yep. And I would sit there and, and staple them in with mm -hmm. a, like those yeah. little hand staplers. And I did that first, and then I thought, oh, I was going to drive them into the ground. <laughs> you, would split the, you would split the stakes. And... Split the stakes. I would hit it so hard that the cardboard would just rip <laughs> yep. off the staples. <laughs> and, uh, and then it didn't even go on the ground, because in Arizona, like, you got to have a drill, yeah. dude. You drill a hole. Yeah, and, it, it depends yeah. on where you're at, and, and there's a technique to oh, it. Oh, God. But, you know, when I remember when I quit my job, and I had, I had made such a big statement and there, there's, a, there's, there's a story about Cortez when he came to the Americas. He was conquering Mexico. He burned the boat. Yes. He literally burned the boat. And he told his guys, look, we're either going to conquer it or we're going to die, but we're not going to go back. And the reason why he burned the boat was he wanted to make sure that these people knew that he couldn't go, they couldn't go back. Yeah, there so is no I, going back. So I, I metaphorically burned the boat. I was yeah. like, F you, F you, I'm never going to come back. Yeah. You know, I'm telling everybody, dude, F corporate America, I'm never going to come back. I made sure that I burned that bridge real good. Burn, burn <laughs> so everything. There, so there was no absolutely way right. to go back. So uh, the guy I went to go meet, he's not he's not working out anymore. I hooked up with this other guy who was doing like loan mods for a while, but that turned out to be just a big complete waste of time and fraud and the loan mod processing companies were just not doing it. So I needed to make money. I needed to feed myself. And I, I this is for real, man. I wrote a list and I wrote every single thing that I could think of making money. And I split it into two, legally and illegally. I swear to freaking God. <laughs> I split it into what can I do? Now, every single one of these things, I wrote out what the benefit it was and what the consequence was. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> I swear to God. I, do, I was like, I'm not going to go back to work. Through, right. through that process of uh, the elimination, I was like, you know what? Bandit signs are here. And, uh, you know, I can place them out there for people. I know that there's people that want it. But the reason why I want to do that is I want to get back into real estate investing. Right. So, and that's basically, that, that was, was the my way plan. to get your foot in the game. Exactly. Because I was like, how do I get back into the game? Well, I just need to start being around more investors. How do I get more around more investors? Let me find out something that they need. Mm -hmm. So I ended up creating this bandit sign company with the specific intention to make me money and put me in front of more real estate investors. Yeah. And, it, and it did just that. Yeah, it, it continued, you know, it started taking off. Eventually, I met people like Corey. He had contacted me, most likely, from one of my Craigslist ads. 
um, met other investors, yeah. met other people. Yeah, I, mean, I think I, actually that's exactly it. Yeah. You did Craigslist ads, or I remember watching you like, hey, <laughs> I'm BP, I'm over here in the corner, I got my drill, let me show you how we do it. <laughs> yeah, I ended up making it's some. Night, it's, it's a little bit later at night. <laughs> The sign police ain't out. Yes. And, uh, watch this. <laughs> we, we used to we used to make uh, so I used to make videos and actually they're probably still on YouTube yeah. under Bandit uh, Fien, uh, Bandit Signs 101. If you guys Bandit want to, Signs 101. yeah, get, go get yourself a kick as to what it started. And you could see from the videos that I was hungry. You could yeah. see from the videos that I was a hustler. You could see from the videos that I was willing to do anything. Dude, I got everything. that impression from the very first time I met you. Mm -hmm. Right? I met I like when you came to my house. I knew like. The band, I realized that, that this wasn't a business. This was a business. Well, it was a business, but it was a way for you to get in the door to, to, for more. Yes. And to feed your mind and to, like, how do I figure some things out, mm -hmm. right? And, um, and that is the story of success for most successful entrepreneurs yes. in real estate. And you have to, you know, I tell this all the time when people contact me and they, they want me to mentor them about becoming investors. The first thing that I tell them is that you got to get your ego out the way because there's going to come a time, and I promise you there's going to come a time where things are going to work out and you're going to have to take a step back, which means you might have to go back to corporate America for a few months. You may have to take on a crappy little side job. You may have to do this and that on the side to yeah. make enough money. And just I moved to out of this house, dude. Yeah, you said that. You moved out yeah. for almost a we year. We moved out of this house, right? We, we mm -hmm. were on your little yeah. deal the other day, and I was like, man, this has a 4,000 square foot house, big house. We moved out for mm -hmm. like nine months. Yeah. We were just starting you, to make money. And you have to do, you have to be willing to do whatever it takes. And a yes. lot of times people are not. That's why people, they they, they level off in success yes. because they're not willing to do whatever it takes. Whatever it takes that's legal and ethical. That's legal and ethical. And that's, that's, a, that's a big plus. And that was one of the things when I started weighing out my options between my illegal and illegal activities, right? I was like... Okay, there's benefits here, but there's a lot of bad stuff that come with it. Yeah, yeah. There's benefits here, and it's going to take a lot more work, but once I figure this out, the, the outcome is going to be so much more bigger. Yeah. And, the, and, and once I realize that the amount of money you can make legally is faster, bigger, and, and you don't have to worry about somebody trying to rob you yeah, or, know, or right? steal from you Take or shoot stand. you or whatever, right? <laughs> yeah, and I said, no, 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 I'm going to go through this side. I mean, they're getting ready to legalize marijuana here in Arizona. Yes. Anyway, so. <laughs> but the, the great thing about this, guys, is that I realize. too. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, for sure. The green rush, the green rush. And you always have to be looking at opportunity. But I realized that this was a means to a way. Right. I said, how can I how can I get in front of other investors? Well, I have to provide some type of some type of benefit, right? Some type that of value. That's so true. And then from there, okay, well, but but guys, here's the thing is that I don't like placing bandit signs. I never liked placing bandit signs. It wasn't like it wasn't like I got up and said, you know what, it's I want to be work, the bandit bro. sign guy. No, yeah, it is. And even so initially when we placed bandit signs, the very first time that I placed bandit signs for somebody else, it took me six hours, five to six hours to place out a hundred signs. As I progress and as I learned it and we created a system, now we can take out uh, 100 signs takes about an hour and a half to place because of our system. Right. Even then it's still hard. Even yeah. then it's still a pain. Yeah. So I never, it wasn't like, oh man, I want to be the most bandit sign guy. No, I want to get to where I want to get, which but is to eventually own real estate. That is so key to how to like get involved with a bunch of other investors that you're going to look up to you and mentor you that you don't even have to pay because now you're just friends. Yes. Right? And, and that was the great thing about it. People don't understand the power of working for free. That people are so hell-bent on this old nine-to-five mentality, pay me for my time. Yeah. Where I, I was willing to sacrifice my time with the end game in mind. Yeah. So a lot of times, like, I, I refer to this all the time, man. I play chess, we play chess, yeah. everybody else plays checkers, which means <laughs> your move goes to here, move goes to there. Sometimes in playing chess, you gotta sacrifice a piece to take on another piece. You gotta sacrifice a, a, a section of your board to further on their other section of their board because it's gonna get you further to their end piece. It doesn't really matter how yeah. it goes. And that was one of the and things. And normally you're thinking three or four moves ahead too. You have right? to, yeah. yeah. And I was, when I started the Bandit Sign Company, I was thinking three or four moves ahead. I wanted a way to create income. I wanted a way to, to, um, to do what I wanted to do. I wanted a way to not have to work that much. Yeah. And then more importantly, I wanted a way to get in back into the real estate investing. Okay, so let's transition now. So Bandit Signs, 
chapter of your life mm -hmm. still have the company i think your brother my, runs yeah it? yeah so i ended up giving it to my brother okay my, my brother was my first uh, manager and then eventually i said hey man you know um, i'm gonna give you the company i'm gonna take a percentage and then about a year or two after taking a percentage i said the company's all yours all right do what you man. want with it and yeah he's been running it for the last few years i'll rock and roll <laughs> okay so from there now you start doing real estate right yes um fixing and flipping but uh, let's well actually before that i got into wholesaling, wholesaling. right okay yes. yes and so a lot of times people like when you're first starting and you don't have lots of money or you yeah. don't have opm yes there's like a couple options really there's like one option there's only one option there's really <laughs> only wholesaling. one option yes and and this is the thing guys is we i knew that i didn't have any money i knew that nobody around me had any money you took stock of what you had and exactly. what you're right you're like that's where I got to start. Exactly, which was out of nowhere, which was where wholesaling came in. Right. And that's the one thing about it is that the great thing about wholesaling is that you are able to learn from other investors. Yeah. So I, you know, with wholesaling, and honestly, wholesaling, you're working for free until you're able to add value to somebody else. Yes. So you can do all the marketing you want. You can you can lock up all the deals you want, but if yep. they're not good deals, if you're not bringing value to somebody else, you're gonna be working it for free. It also teaches you how to find a damn good oh, deal. Oh, God, yes. Right? Because had I you had be money. You have to deal finder. Yes. Scavenger. And had I had money, I would have lost my ass pretty much 10 times over yeah. because I would have bought every single crappy deal that, that came you my thought way. It was, said, yeah, oh, that's a deal. Awesome. And then all of a sudden you're like, what do you mean it's not a deal? Mm -hmm. Like there's some times where I was hosting and you're like, what do you mean, dude? This is a deal. They're like, no, dude, it's not a deal. Yeah. It's not a deal. Hey, how many other people calling you, right? <laughs> no. Because <laughs> you know when you got a deal, dude, because it goes off oh, like in goes, two minutes. Man, it goes crazy. <laughs> and the thing about it was that eventually I said, you know what? I'm going to move. I'm going to move into wholesaling. Um, I met this I met this other investor and we started wholesaling together. We were creating this company and eventually it didn't work out. And I said, you know, I just need to do this by myself. Um, it's just better for me, my type of personality. Yeah. And a lot of times, uh, you know, guys, and I do want to put this out there for you, find out who you are. Um, that's a big, big part of success. Yeah. And and when Save I was, advice. yeah, it is. Because when I when I was working with this other investor after my, my band design company, um, he wanted to keep a professional appearance. And I obviously am not that professional appearance. So we clashed a lot of times. And, and then eventually I ended up toning back my personality to kind of match his personality. Right. And, and uh, inside- You were being true to yourself, no, were you? I felt my soul dying. Yeah. I, I literally felt my soul dying. So when I, when I separated from him and I started my own thing, I said, I'm just gonna do me. It doesn't really matter. I'm not trying to inspire anybody. I'm not trying to get anybody to like me. It's just gonna be- Yeah, I'm I not am. doing it for the fame. I'm just gonna be me and that's, and the right people will attract me, and, and if you don't, I don't really care. Exactly, and and what I ended up doing there is I ended up finding three or four investors that I had that knew me from the bandit sign business. Right. So these were people that were that were hiring me to do bandit signs. And that's how I knew them. I contacted them and said, "Hey, man, I'm going to start wholesaling myself. Can I wholesale you some properties? Um, I don't have access to the MLS. I don't have any money. I don't have anything. So if I find a deal, can I bring it to you? And would you be able to analyze it and tell me if it's good? Yeah. And, and in return, I promise not to send it to anybody else. You right. just tell me whether you want it or not. And if you don't, then I'll send it to somebody else. Right. And I and I and I created this relationship with these investors investors that now I was able to bring benefit to them and a lot of times I knew for a fact that if I would just stick this crap on Craigslist I would probably make five ten grand more but it didn't matter to me because I was building the relationship with these people that have given me a chance yeah. initially all right so so wholesaling start right yeah. now um, tell me about the time you first got your first piece of OPM yes so or partnership or how like what how did that look like <laughs> So I was wholesaling for many years, and then eventually I went to um, I went to a seminar. And actually, I'll just I'll answer your question. But a friend of mine, Chris Ontiveros, you met him. He's a part yep. of the AZ Flip guys. I, I knew of him, but we weren't really friends. He right. put a post on Craig's on Facebook and said, "Hey, I got a I got a ticket to a seminar about fixing and flipping. I bought it for my wife. She can't make it. Anybody willing to go? Up, uh, it's free. You just got to pay for your own airline and hotel stay." And I was the only one that raised my hand and said, "I'll go." I remember I had less than three thousand dollars in that bank, and it cost me about a thousand to get to the to the to the right. event, right, the and event, everything. Right. And that completely changed my life. And I was like, okay, all I need to do is find properties, which I already know how to find properties. Right. And all I need to do now is just find somebody with money. So I put it out to the universe, and eventually one of my investors, uh, somebody who had been I've been wholesaling to for a while, she was like, hey, BP, um, I just got I'm just pregnant and I'm like oh that's freaking awesome dude that's freaking great she's like yeah you know I'm like 30 something I've never had a kid this is gonna be my first one I don't feel like working for a while 
Um, my parents have a lot of money sitting in some account that they normally lend me to flip. Would you like to borrow it? And I was like, hell yeah. Hell yeah, <laughs> yeah dude. And the thing is, I didn't, I didn't even know that this was a possibility. Okay, so I want to I wanna touch on something because this is, that's a monumental moment in your life. Yes. Pivot. Complete pivot, right? Yeah. Because up until then, you're wholesaling, and, and you're making a piece of the profit, mm-hmm. but the investors are making most of it. Yes. Right? You go find a piece of OPM. Yes. And dude, all of a sudden, and what did that do for your confidence and your belief in yourself? Because up until then, because I know how you were raised in this the same way I was raised. Mm-hmm. Poor people, we would never think people would ever give us a dollar. No, not at all. And for us to go work it, mm-hmm. that's like an insane, and I'm telling you, I know you guys are listening to this podcast right now, watching the video with all the smoke coming through. I don't even care. <laughs> there, there. I'm moving it. There, there's not smoking no more. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you're telling yourself right now, I I don't think I can do it. And I'm gonna tell you, it's it's just a stupid belief pattern. Yes. And we've got to break it. You've got to break it. And you know what? I because growing up poor, because growing up minority. I had an assumption that a all, all rich people were white, or I, actually let me rephrase that, all white people were rich. I had that assumption. Then I was like, okay, well not every white person, but I think most white people are. Yeah, yeah. And then as I progressed, I'm like, oh, okay, well maybe not all of them, but some of them. And you know what? Uh, you know what? They they they're not all of them. They some of them work hard, but they're never gonna they're never gonna let me. Like I'm not them. I don't have anything like right. them. So it really kind of separated, and it was this mental aspect of it. Yeah. Because I had you know I had. Probably a year before I started flipping, I had talked with you. Yeah. And um, I had came over here, and we, we talked specifically about other people's money. And I remember listening to the concept. I remember saying, yeah, I like it. That's cool. But in the back of my mind, I'm like, but who's ever going to lend me money? Like, I don't have shit. You know, I don't have anything. But when I came to your house, I was living in my brother's apartment. I was sleeping in his futon. He didn't even have a fucking, he didn't even have a couch. He had a futon. He had a freaking futon, bro. That's like sleeping on a grill. <laughs> Horrible. Uh, uh, I don't even think I was driving my own car at that time. I'm almost certain that when I came here, I was driving his truck, and I and I and I would uh, I would bribe him by paying for that. gas money and uh, and for uh, insurance. So, <laughs> so in my mind, I was like, why would people ever lend me money? Yeah, look like, at me. I'm over here. There's no way, right? Yes. And then and then when Robin came out and she brought it up herself. She said, "You know what, BP? I trust you. You've been you've been really awesome. You know, you've made me some money, but more than anything, I know that you're not going to mess up this opportunity. So I'm want to. If you need money, let me know, and I'll lend you money for a deal. Yeah. And it it it, it the, the what that did for my confidence level was it shot up, because a lot of times we are our own worst critic." Yeah, and and we may be doing a lot of good things, but in our eyes, we're like, oh, it's not. It's good not enough. good enough. It's not good enough. But people looking outside say, "Man, BP's intelligent, mm-hmm. right? He knows how to do things that I don't even know how to do." Yeah. And so, so the, here, there's a formula for this, okay? And and I feel bad because I didn't really just like tell you, like, here's the exact formula. And maybe I did, maybe I didn't. But <laughs> but the receiving mode wasn't ready, mm-hmm. right? No, it wasn't but ready. Like. Um, because it takes a like you were already wholesaling. Yes. You knew how to identify deals. Yes. Right. Now we're gonna transition to the multifamily part of this, right? Because this is gonna be the cool transformation that yes. we're gonna talk about. But in the beginning, sometimes a lot of you guys are fix and flipping and wholesaling now, and it's important that like th- the things that I teach on raising private money transitions to that business. Yes. And then you will work to transition them into the multi site. Yes. Right. But you gotta have a credibility kit. What is a credibility kit? The credibility kit is just something that shows your that you've bought and sold, mm-hmm. right? So if you're a wholesaler, that's it's before pictures because you're there when you first yeah. buy it, and then you sell it to your investor, get on the MLS and mm-hmm. rip those damn pretty pictures. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and 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 the sales price. Yes, and the sales right? price. And put that as your before and after mm-hmm. in your piece. Just because you didn't have the money to do the deal doesn't matter. Because it was your deal. You knew and, it was a deal. And, you know, he's, he makes a really good point because a lot of times, um, how do I, perception is reality. Yes. And and if you see somebody with a credibility kit, you automatically presume that they know what they're talking about. You know, I, I've, I've been to, I, I've been really slowly kind of coming out of my shell 
into more transitioning more into a public persona. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but for the most part, I, I'm kind of reserved for the most part. And I remember I saw this guy, and he's, he has videos, and he had a book, and he was, you know, he was doing all this stuff here. And I'm like, oh, my God, dude, this guy's fucking awesome. I'm like, man, this guy's really, he's really making it happen. Well, yeah. I ran into him at a seminar about two years ago, and he was like, oh, dude, like, man, I wish I was like you, bro. Like, dude, I'm, not, I'm not even doing as many deals as you are, you know. But because he had the YouTube videos, because he had the, the little credibility package, because he had the little book, there's a little crappy book that he wrote, you know. Um, people perceived him to yeah. be that that way yeah and, and and sometimes it's your job you have to be your biggest cheerleader at, at that sense you have to man up put on your suit of confidence yes right yes and say I am I am worthy mm -hmm. I'm worthy to receive this money I'm I know that I can take this money and do real good with it. And, and this is not something that you tell your investors. This is something that you tell yourself. Yes. This is something that you this lock yourself in. Exactly. You lock yourself in the mirror. I mean, in a bathroom. You look yourself at, right in the eye, right in the mirror, and you tell yourself this was going to happen. Because, yes. guys, here's, here's the point that we talked about initially. The mindset. There was nothing different between me now and then other than my mindset and the confidence that came yes. with my mindset. Yes. So when I met with Corey initially, he's telling me OPM, other people's money. I'm like, yeah, that sounds awesome. But in the back of my mind, I'm like, yeah, but you can't do it. Yeah, but you're not that type of person. But what are you going to do? I mean, you're driving. You don't even have your own car. Right. You know, you're, you're barely making, scratching money here, making wholesale. Like, this is all a bunch of crap. You're never going to do anything. And it's that little ego voice that's inside back of everybody's mind yeah. that's there. But it's the mindset, guys. You really have to create it. And if you are into personal development by any means whatsoever, think and grow rich, the cornerstone of every personal development, every personal development book written after Think and Grow Rich <laughs> is basically a, 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 a kind of a, a variation of that. However, in Think and Grow Rich, step number two, he talks about creating what's known as your self-confidence formula. And it's something that you do, that you say to yourself, that you repeat every single day for a certain amount of time, and it's to build up your self-confidence because Napoleon Hill knew that if you're not confident in yourself, you can't get anything. Corey could literally give you his credibility package, which he did to me. Corey could literally write down step by step, here's how it's done, here's how it works, here's how I was able to do it, which he did for me. And it still took me years to get around to it yeah. because of my mind. But that's sometimes it's just the season. Like, I believe we go through seasons in life. And it's until you decide, right? When mm -hmm. you decide that I'm, I'm, I'm ready. Yes. And then, like, it's a switch. And that, that's exactly what it was because right? once that I went to... That girl just gave you enough, a little snippet. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, you're like, whoa. I'm ready. Yeah. The, the, the lady at the seminar, Robin Thompson, over in, um, in Florida... She she's the one that said you do this. Do that was this, Robin this, Thompson. And that. It was Robin Thompson. Yeah. Oh, I know Robin, Robin Thompson's a badass. Yeah, she's a badass man. If yeah. you guys if you guys are in Florida, Ocala, Florida specifically, because she's such a badass that she doesn't even need to leave her hometown anymore. Yeah. she's like I'm throwing seminars two three times a year and they're gonna be right in my uh, backyard. Yeah, uh -huh. And if you guys don't come, then whatever. <laughs> but anyway, care. I loved her. She set off something in me mentally. This once I heard her talk. When she said it takes this this and this to flip, I'm like, okay, I have this this. I just need this. Okay, I think I think I can make it happen. And then once my investor said, you know what, I have this money, let's make it happen, boom, it was on. Right. It was on. I, I literally found the deal within a week. Yep. I, exactly. Once said, you know you got boom. money, like you already know how to, you already know mm -hmm. the process. And I knew the process. Yeah, and you and so you switched to work and found what you needed to find. Yes. Right? And and here's the thing, guys, is that not only did I find what I needed to find, I went balls to the wall completely. And I don't suggest that you do this, by the way. <laughs> it, it's a good and bad thing, but I don't suggest you do this on your first deal. I literally bought a crappy 2-1 that was fire damage, and I turned it into a 3-2. Oh, gosh. Uh, so we did we did expansions. We switched out floor plans. <laughs> you uh, went, you went full we went Monty full, on it. Yeah, full Monty on the stuff, which I do not suggest you guys do for your first deal. <laughs> Did you make any money? Uh, barely. Barely. <laughs> barely. And, and, and a lot of that came from me wanting to be part of the deal. Right. So, you know, we talk about OPM using other people's money. And OPM is just a, it's just a variation of a word called leverage, meaning you got to leverage what other people have that you don't have. Yeah. Eventually, though, I learned that I need to leverage contractors. Yeah. And not do the DIY stuff that you see on TV, all that fix and flip yourself crap on this. No, stuff. no, no. And and unfortunately, especially for me, when you I have money, because see, like that, the problem with that mentality 
is you are only limited on the one job that you're on. Yes. You couldn't even do multiple projects. No, not at all. And so when you have bunches of OPM, yes. it opens up multiple projects. And, and that leads to, now that's a whole other quagmire. Yes. But you gotta have, now you have subs. You're like, okay, I got, you know, you have, now you start developing a process. Yes. Right? And so once these subs here are done with the, you know, uh, trash out and, uh, and drywall and stucco repair, all that stuff. But I mean, and right? I took, I took it a step to forward. Job. I ended up hiring a GC. Yeah. Oh, because I, I, yeah. He wants to try to do that, right? No, 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 not at all. So I, I, ended, up, I ended up spending the majority of my time at Home Depot um, for that first deal. Then I was trying to save money, which at the end of the day ended up costing me money. I ended up going over you keep budget. Talking. I'm gonna get another log. No, go ahead. I, me nuts. I ended up going over budget for about ten, like ten grand, and then I ended up spending more time than I should. So by the time it finally got on the market, we ended up hitting the slow period, which is normally uh, Thanksgiving to about end of January. We ended up hitting that slow period, and by the time holding costs, closing costs, and everything came. I only made a few grand. I mean, it was it was very minimal. Plus, I wanted to make sure that because of OPM, that my investor was taken care of. Right. I made sure that she got a return, even though I was going to get a very minimal return. Right. So, because that's when you're dealing with other people's money, goal number one is to make sure that they don't lose money. Goal number two is to make sure that you make them money. Okay, so you just, like, stepped on my tripwires yes <laughs> right which is the reason why most people will start going into multifamilies yes is because of you are a professional lows runner yes which a lot of people are out there that are doing fix and flips that's what they are mm -hmm. they don't want to admit it yeah but like and, and and they manage people they're always in there going gosh subcontractor why can't yep. you do this why man i why I, why didn't you get this Wax ring. Yes. Now we gotta go run back to Lowe's to get a, a two dollar wax ring for the toilet. Yes. For and the what tile is, guy. And what does that take? So you as the as the investor, right? How much time does that take? That takes about an hour out of your time, to go get a little crappy Times ring. Times three or four what? projects. Yeah. Now it's your whole day's busted. Exactly. Right? So I I remember that my project grand lawn. I remember that I was sitting there waiting for this thing to, to sell. I need. I ran out of money. I needed a wholesale property just to pay my bills. Mm -hmm. I ended up finding a deal and I ended up wholesaling it to my friend. And um, I went to I went to meet with him at the property. He said, oh man, this is cool, bro. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and lock it up and this is gonna be my 15th house. And I'm like, 15 flip? Oh, that's freaking awesome. He's like, yeah, 15 flip going on at what time? One time. And I'm like, 15 flip going on at what? He's like, yeah, bro. And I'm like, how do you do that? He's like, um, you get the hell away from the house. Yeah. You're not a contractor. You're not a painter. You're not a laborer. You got two jobs. You got two skill sets. You know how to line up money, and you know how to line up a deal. Yep. So between your conversation that I had with you about learning the, the power of lining up money, and then this guy telling me, look, man, you get the hell don't, out of the don't house. Don't do the work. Yeah. Right? It, it completely blew my mind. Yeah. And I literally went from doing one house at a time to two, four, six, eight. I ended up to right about 15 at a time. Yeah. Um, and it was just constantly this machine kind of going. And that's still not bad. So you can make a good living do that. Okay. Yes. Now. But it's still a job. It's still a job. And, and it still requires lots of paying attention. Yes. Right? And, and, but. The great thing about that, though, is the reason why I was able to eventually leverage out that way was I learned that, hey, I could do this also with money. So I don't need to go and do all these little things with money. I just need to learn how to leverage and find other people with money. Mm -hmm. So in order for me to get 15 flips going out of time, that means that I had to find OPM. And that was amazing. And, and honestly, that's actually what ended up kind of leading me into the multifamily is learning that I yes. can then create this traction. So I went from one single investor <laughs> to I, I went to this other seminar that talked about raising private money. Right. And literally within two weeks. He didn't come to me again. No. Gosh, damn it. <laughs> literally within a week or so. For free and I wouldn't, wouldn't charge anything. It, it, you know what? I, end, I needed to go to this thing. I needed yeah, to I see because and here's the reason why when I look at somebody like Corey I'm like oh man this guy this guy he's smart he's freaking he knows what he's doing and he's got an apartment complex under his belt I don't know if I could do that uh, maybe maybe I can't I went to the seminar and there was people raising literally hundreds of thousands of dollars and they were dumbasses they were dumbasses they were the most incompetent like incompetent mother effers that I've ever met and they were just dumbass and I'm like Okay. Wait, okay. Doing it? Wait, a it? Wait a minute. Wait yeah. a minute. Oh, okay. If these guys can do it, I know for a fact I can do it. Hey, remind me if we ever do this again, 
that we never have a damn fire going. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's okay. I thought it. it was a great idea, but this thing is blowing smoke everywhere, dude. Well, was what it is is you got those other wet pieces of wood there. Uh, yeah, well, because it rained. And once so, they, yeah, uh, once I'm they like, catch, it's just smoky, so yeah, it is dude. what it is. <laughs> <laughs> but learning the power of OPM, learning the power of leverage, and, and the great thing about OPM is that it's other people's money. Now, that's a good and a bad thing, but it's a great thing because now you're able to not have to come out of your money, but you're able to add value to them. Right. And to me, that is a much more valuable part. And you learn, so this is what I believe, is that you, when, you, when you really get good at raising money, the truth is, is you're, not, you're never selling. No. Right? You never sell a deal like, oh man, like, oh, I need your money. I need your, like, listen, I offer opportunities, mm -hmm. right? The opportunities you have now, and I want to get let's let's because we were getting close on. I don't know how we're sure. at in this time frame, but I want to transition at how you started. How you're starting to transition to multifamilies yes. because, and I think that's exactly how it worked for me. I started off wholesaling, then I got to fix and flip. Mm -hmm. I started raising money for private fix and flips. Mm -hmm. Very easy to do once I understood the process. Yes. Credibility kit and a private money program. So um, maybe I'll send a link to my private money program. Okay. Right, that'd be smart. Um, just for all the single family guys, I'm gonna give you some love. And uh, there'll be a link in the show notes to get my private money program. And I'll include my stupid credibility kit, right? <laughs> for single family homes. Yep. Right? And that's like, it's basic, it's way generic. Yeah. It's not like what I do in multis, <laughs> but it's, but it works. Yes. And the thing about it is that you learn as you go. You have to, guys, I'm, I would highly suggest that you guys go through the process. And it is a process. You know, you start wholesaling first because you don't know what a deal is. You think you know what a deal is until you actually meet other investors that are putting up their money or their yep. investors' money. Yep, and let's talk. So, and this is, this is how, like, I'm going to show you a little technique that I used when I was in single family, mm -hmm. how to transition to multifamily. So, when you're sitting there talking to the investor, you're like, hey, listen, you know, and I always lead, I would lead with multi. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, listen, where the, real, where the real money's at and where I think the consistent money that you're looking for is truly in multifamily. Mm -hmm. But, um, and I, and I, I wanna talk a little bit about that, but I really don't wanna talk too much because I just wanna put it out here and let you know that, it's, that that's where you should be mm -hmm. because it provides, you know, consistent cash flow and long-term growth, right? But I don't know you and you don't know me. And that's like a five-year commitment. And I'm not even sure if we want to like commit for five years, mm -hmm. right? Like, I just want to date a little bit. You want to date, <laughs> right? I'm not ready to get married yet, yeah. right? And so then I say, so here's what I think we should do. I also do, you know, these fix and flip deals. And these mm -hmm. are about, um, you know, between four to um, four months to, you know, three months to, to six months mm -hmm. long yeah. projects, right? Not years. And so I think it's a good way for us to start and again, it kind of start our relationship. Mm -hmm. And you know, basically, you give me some of your dough, give me some of your money. Um, I do what I do, and then I, I return your money with some profit. Mm -hmm. And uh, and you're gonna judge me by that. And then if you if you like that process, um, then really what I'll say is the next step is really to start transitioning you into the multifamily space. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is because what really happens in that fix and flip process is it's a lot of work. You give me your money, I give it back to you. You give me your money, I give it back to you. It's all this crap, right? Mm -hmm. And then like. You're travel. You're busy, right? You just want, like most most of my investors, the most of the investors that invest with me, what they really want to do is set it and forget it. Yes. Right. Yes. And that sounds kind of like you too. Yes. Right? That's what you want to do. Exactly. And it's, yeah. And it, then that's that's then that's the pitch. When you're dealing with investors, you have to understand that they are in it for what works for them. Yes. And and my mentor tells me all the time that we have a, an antenna sticking out of our head. And every single person in every part of the world has the same antenna tuned into the exact same radio station, <laughs> WIIFM, right? What's in it for me? What's in it for me? And that was the part that I love most about OPM. And that's actually the part that I love most about the multifamily. So with, when I was doing, uh, when I'm doing fix and flips, even right now with my current investors that I'm doing fix and flips, it all depends on the deal. Sometimes they may not get a check this month or two because we don't have a deal here. We're ever partnering up, whatever it is that we're doing. but. At the same time, I'm able to get them a much better return than they get anywhere else. Now, as we're looking at it, I'm saying, how can I get them a more consistent return? As opposed to a higher return, how can yes. I get them a more consistent return? Yes, and they're willing to take less if it's consistent because it all pans out anyway. Yes, 
and and that that's that that was the point that I was that I was looking at. So I'm looking at here. Um, I've I've already mentioned that I I like to do automation. I already mentioned that I like giving back. I already mentioned that one of the big reasons why I do OPM is because I really truly enjoy making people a much better return. And I've said this before, and I'll continue saying this, and I don't care who gets mad, but I'm saving these people from their own stupidity. I'm really saving people from their own stupidity because they don't know what the hell to do with money. Yeah. Like most people have no idea what to do with money. Most people will have it sitting <coughs> in a freaking money market account or a savings CD. account or a CD yeah. or some crap like that. I mean, it's horrible, horrible. So I started noticing and I was like, okay, I'm putting together all this money. I have a credibility now. I have a, a track record now. People are noticing that, hey, look, when this guy Brian says that he's going to do something, he does. Yep. This guy's been flipping. You know, he's not just flipping one house at a time. Yep. This guy never, this guy's traveling more than he's, he did more than he's at his freaking houses. Yeah. Like, he's got to know something. There's got to be right. something up with him. So I looked at, I looked at the scenario, <coughs> and I actually started moving into multifamily. I, I eventually started, um... I eventually started by buying single family. Yep. So buying and holding single family. Yep. I had a few opportunities and I was actually able to buy two single family properties with none of my own money. Right. The first one I did a, a variation of was known as a subject two. Uh, basically we, what I did was a lease, uh, lease option sandwich, yep. which a uh, sandwich lease yeah, option, sandwich right? Lease, uh, yeah, yeah, whatever. No, that's very well. It's uh, very anyway, I, I put a property under, under contract, 10 year lease option for the price that the lady were, the lady uh, owed. Then I turned around and rented it to somebody else and I'm cash flowing like 300 bucks a month on that yeah. one. Then I bought this other property and I ended up fixing it. And I, told, I called one of my friends. He's like, I got good credit. I got some money sitting around. I'm like, how would you like to partner up on a deal? Yeah. You refinance me out of this house. You get yourself a traditional loan. I'll run, I'll manage everything and we'll split the profits. So I started noticing that, you know what? I like this cash flow thing. I like the fact that the money's coming in every month. I don't like doing this one at a time stuff though. Right. Like I gotta go one door and then another door, no. Right. So eventually the things that Corey had been talking about slowly started creeping back. And that's the great thing about it. You know, guys, you may be listening to this. This may be way over your head right now. You may not even be st at the point where you're even wholesaling. And you're like, man, I don't even know if I should be listening to this. I mean, I, this is kind of like way over my head. Yeah. Stick with it because it will come. If you are true to your journey and if you're true to what you know that you want to do. When I met with Corey and he was telling me about his first apartment complex, I knew in the back of my mind, I knew in the bottom of my heart that that's what I wanted to do eventually. Yeah. The confidence was in there, the confidence in my ability to do this, the confidence in, in my ability to raise the, um, that amount of money right. was not there, but but the, the desire for it was. Yeah. So I knew that that's where I wanted to go. As I progressed and as I you know, kind of let everything go, and you know, I'm not gonna get too esoterical with anything, but I, I'm a big believer in the universe, I'm a big believer in, in vibrations and energy and the law of attraction. And, uh, and really when I let go of my control, of me wanting to control everything, and I said, the universe, you're gonna take control of what needs to be done and I'm just gonna follow, I'm just gonna follow my feelings as to where they go. It led me into where I'm at now. So I eventually, um, it just started nine in the back of my head, multifamily, multifamily, multifamily. Yeah. A good friend of mine that I that I partner up with for my nonprofit stuff, he yeah. owns mobile home parks. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, this is another step of multifamily. And I don't yeah. even have to own the building, I just need to own the land. Yeah. So multifamily, multifamily, multifamily. Before you knew it, I watched some webinar online and I never watch webinars online. I never watch webinars online. And some guy came up and he was talking about this and he was like, Look, I got a I got a webinar coming a, a seminar next week. This, the webinar was pre-recorded like a month, whatever. I'm looking at the date and I'm like, crap, that's next week, man. I need to fly out to Boston. I'm gonna go. I, I swear to God, it was a uh, $2,500 deposit right there and then, and no money back, whatever. I put my deposit, I called my assistant. I said, you find me a place, you give me an airplane ticket, I'm gonna go. I went there, I took this guy's information, came back, found an apartment complex. Who did you see? Huh? Who was uh, it? This guy named Marco Koslowski. Okay. He's a Canadian dude. Um, he, you, you would love him because he's literally like a he's literally like an old Eastern European version of me. Okay, right? he's just just as authentic as they come. Yeah. Whether whether he offends you or not, he doesn't care. Right. It's just what it is, and that's right. one of the things that I was more most drawn to. And guys, you know, I know that you're gonna feel the same way about this, but buy the steak, not the freaking sizzle. All these gurus here sell the sizzle. Oh, poof, 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 poof. My mentor taught me. 
that um, complicated is entertaining. Complicated is, is it's appealing. People, if it's complicated, and they, oh my God, that's gotta be awesome. But very simple, that's teachable, that's learnable. Amen. And what Corey teaches is simple. It's learnable. Corey's not over here, yeah, check this out, oh, blah, blah. numbers here, boo, 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 boo. And you know, there's, there's a guy that I know, and I'm not gonna mention him because I, you know, he's a good guy. <laughs> Yeah, but he's he's very animated, and he started like recording his sales calls, and now he's putting them online and stuff right there. And he's he's the sizzle guy. He's the yeah, boom, 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 yeah, what well, man, yeah, boom, I'm doing boom, it. look boom, at me, boom. I'm doing it, I'm doing it, man, and, look and, at me. And, and, and the thing about it is that guys, like you could follow people like that. You could take their hot new lines, their hot tips as a as a close a deal, but it's not gonna work for you because you're not them. You don't have what they have. So even if you say verbatim what they said, it's still not going to work for you. Yeah. So you're better off finding somebody that's like, look, this is the real thing. I'm not going to bullshit you. Here's I'm not going really to sugarcoat you. Here's how it works. And I'm going to tell you guys, what's real is boring. It's boring. Yes. It's just strictly boom, 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 and boom. You know how I learned? You know where I found my multifamily deal? I found it on Craigslist. Yeah. The guy said, here's how I find my deals. Very, very simple. Very, very boring. The guy was proud of it. He's like, look, I'm dumb. And I have no, I'm, I have no queries about being dumb. So because I'm dumb, I had to create a very simple yes. system for me to follow because yes. I'm dumb. Yes. <laughs> so if it's complicated, it'll cut yeah, it out. <laughs> exactly. Which drew me into it because it's all awesome. So he's like, yeah, look, you go through Craigslist and you do boom, 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 boom. It's going to be tedious. It's going to take a lot of time. You just set a certain amount of times yep. and you just do this. And I did. I walked through the whole process. I ended up finding somebody that needed to sell their apartment complex. <laughs> I, I ended up, guys, I ended up OPM, OPM. I put no money down on this deal. The guy, the seller, is going to sell or finance this deal. So that's no money out of my pocket. Then he, he required 20% down. I reached out to my good buddy Casey, which you met over yeah, at, the, yeah, at the event yeah, with the Christmas yeah. suit. Casey was all excited <laughs> about that deal, oh, too, man, dude. He, this guy hit the freaking jackpot. <laughs> yeah. And guys, this goes, this goes to prove my point about OPM. So I reached out to my good friend Casey, and I said, look, man, this is my first apartment complex. Um, you know, Obviously, we're, gonna, we're going through some bumps and stuff, and we're, we're going to have to learn this thing. I'm willing to give you 50% of the ownership we're going to start an llc and i'm gonna give you 50 percent. all you got to do is bring in the money you got to be the money cost you got to put the down payment and all the other little deposits and stuff that we need you're going to be the money guy after that we're going to split everything 50 50 right down the middle now when i proposed him the deal i gave him worst case scenario i said look man if all goes well we we should be cash flowing right about here you should be making right about there as we started digging more into the numbers and the financials and everything else we're like man this is way better than expected holy crap this guy's got this oh my god this is got this going on this going this going on and the guy that sold us the deal he he had been a multi-family investor for 50 years just kind of retiring yeah he's an old school like really tough guy you yeah. know and everything so he had a system set he, his system, his tenants are not trying to mess with him. Like, that's how it is. He, he literally makes them go to the bank and deposit their stuff, and he's got a little code that he uses so he knows which apartments paid what or whatever, right? Really, like, old-school, uh, archaic system, but it freaking works. Right. And I step in. But he's in, trained everybody that way. He's trained everybody, including the property manager and all the tenants in here. So, guys, I literally walked into cash flow. I'm walking from into day th one. From day one. $30,000 a oh. year. <laughs> $30,000 a year. That's probably what some of you guys make at the job that you hate. Driving an hour to, driving an hour back, laughing at your dumbass uh, boss's jokes, you know, like just because you have to, because you're trying not to get fired, because you found out that they were firing people left and right. Uh, $30,000 a year, guys. OPM, OPM, OPM. And here's the thing. When I bought it, I knew for a fact that I was going to be using somebody's money, somebody yeah. else's money. Yeah. Specifically, was going to be using now, somebody else's. Money. I want to. I want to show you. Like, so there's something key that you said that I most people will never pick up on. You gave up. Now this is your first kind of deal. Yeah. Yeah. Deal, right. And you gave up half. Yes. Okay. Most people are not willing. No. No. To give up. Half. Shame on you. <laughs> Shame, on, Shame you. on you. Because sometimes that's what it takes. When you have 
no track record, mm -hmm. and you're trying to do something new, just get in the game. Yeah. If you had to give up 75%, I would do it. You'd be willing. I would do it. You'd be willing, I right? Would do it. I would be willing. Mm -hmm. I was always willing, right? Because it's that do whatever the blanket yeah, takes. Exactly. Well, right? not only that, but. We're playing chess, guys. Yes. I'm sacrificing a pawn so I can go get that damn knight. So yeah. I can get their bishop, kill their queen, mm -hmm. and then checkmate. <laughs> I like how it works. I just play Monopoly. <laughs> <laughs> I want four houses. I want to get those. I want to get a fucking red hotel. <laughs> yeah. It, it, guys, but it's, it's, the, it's the looking down the line concept of it. And, and most people, that's why most people are never going to be good at OPM. Because they're too focused about what can I get? How does this benefit me? And no, when you guys start moving into OPM, especially with multifamilies, yeah. it's not about you anymore. It's about the investors. It's about making sure that they feel comfortable. It's about making sure that they understand what's going on. It's about making sure that they get a return. It's about making sure that when you give them their money back, they can't wait to give it back to you. They, yeah. they, they're like, don't even give me that money. Just just keep it. Can we just sign just something that says, yeah, yeah, just keep it working. Like, I don't need, uh, and they, they, I, I swear to God, you have probably had people that tell you, don't give it back to me because I'm going to blow it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, am I lying? That's, yeah. a, that's what happens, guys. And it's about the power of OPM. But the power of OPM is learning how to leverage the the skills that you have so you can make them money. Yeah. And th that was the concept that I learned from my buddies that did the um, the mobile home parks. Yeah. These guys were doing a lot of flips back in the day. They were to the point where they were they had about fifty fifty to sixty thousand dollars. I mean fifty to sixty thousand dollars a month yeah. in overhead cost. Yeah. Just between their hard money, everything else was going on. They were doing big projects, and they just they were like, dude, this is horrible. Yeah. This this is torture in my mind. So they ended up shifting, and they did the exact same thing. They took yeah. their investors. They said, look, we're gonna buy mobile home parks. And what they did was they gave away the house. So we, I, I had a nice chat with them, and they said, look, man, here's what we did. The first yeah. two, three of them, we gave away the house. We gave over 50% of let me, the... Let me show you the way mm -hmm. and get everybody comfortable. And then you get confidence and you have a track record. Yes. And then you can dial it back, right? And then start... And, and they did. They, they eventually ended up dialing it back. They eventually ended up refinancing some of these properties, gave them their investors money back. They, they, they took me to some of their houses. They were like, look, this one, this one, and these, these complexes, we haven't pulled any money in four yeah. years. We're just making sure our investors get paid. But we're about to refinance here at the end of the month. This one's going to bring me 30. This one's going to bring me 50. This one's going to bring me 80,000 a month. Yep. So they didn't chess guys they're playing chess they didn't make a single penny for four years because they knew that they were going to make 40 50 and 80 thousand in four years a month yeah now what they did was they ended up partnering up they ended up refinancing they sold one of them they just bought their first mobile home park with leveraging another mobile home park so they cross collaborated right they didn't, now they don't have to give any part of the pie up right because they took their asset that's already right. here and they used to cross collateralize this new asset right and not have to get but they wouldn't have been able to build these few assets without giving away the yes. house initially that's that is the story dude so bp brother <laughs> opm <laughs> right dude <laughs> lots of good things okay for uh if you had to give one piece of advice to all my listeners out there um and let's maybe do it for OPM, mm -hmm. right? What would you What would you say to them? Um, once again, guys, W I I F M. What's in it for me? People don't give a shit about you. Sorry about that. People don't give a crap about you. People don't give a crap about where you live. People don't give a crap about what car you drive. People don't care about how much money you have in your bank account. They care about what you can do for them. And this was a big, big stepping stone in my mental thing when I moved into OPM. Is oh, well, how are people are ever going to lend me money? They don't care what you have is what can you make me? What can you do for me? And that's the one thing, piece of advice that I would just put it in your head, guys. A, understand that even if you don't have anything, as long as you can provide something for somebody else. And, I, and I'll use a quick example here. We're both men. We, we both like women. You're married. You know, you, your woman is a very beautiful woman. That means that you had to pursue her. It's not like she came up to you and said, hey there, big boy, you wanna. No, you had to pursue her. You had to kind of, and now you had to convince her as to why it was in her best interest to be with you. Yeah. You know, you can't just be a, I was gonna say a swinging, <laughs> because there's a million of those, right? <laughs> you, what is the benefit? What is proud the benefit of, you, of coming? Of you. <laughs> I know you're working on it. Yeah, I'm working. <laughs> I, I, I do pretty good when I have to. Uh, so anyway, guys, you have to understand 
that it's what can you add to them. And once you're able to understand that yourself personally, then understand the way how you can how you can present that to somebody else and say, look, here's the benefit of you lending me your money. And that is OPM, that is leverage, and that is your self-confidence working. Because once you, and if you don't believe that you're gonna be good enough to make the money, they're not gonna believe that you're good enough right. to make the money. Yep. And that would be my, my only piece of suggestion would be WIIFM, what's in it for me? Not about you, but it's all about them. Yeah. Uh, how can people get a hold of you if, they, if people want to know more about BP and what BP is up to? Where do they check you out at? Uh, well, the easiest way to get a hold of me is right through my Facebook. Uh, I will spell my name out for you because it's, it's promise you is the only one spelled that way. B R A Y A N D. I promise you, you put that on Facebook, I'll be the first one there. Just in case, I'll give you my last name P O N C I A N O. Uh, I'm a very open book about everything, so you can see everything not only about my, my life, but my journey, the nonprofit stuff right. that we do, the multifamily units that we're moving into. AZ and everything. Flip guys. Yeah, and then uh, that's the other thing, the AZ Flip guys. So on Facebook, same thing. Uh, look us up under AZ Flip guys. Me and my partner, Chris Ontiveros, we, we put a show every single Friday live where we interview quality people like Corey. Uh, actually, if you guys on there, make sure you go back and check out the video that we did with Corey. It was freaking amazing. We ended up going like 40 minutes over our time just because it was that freaking badass. But anyway, guys, we're constantly putting out tips. Literally, if you go on AZ Flip, guys, and you just go through our past videos, you can find out how to how to wholesale, how to get started, how to raise money, how to put a deal together, how to do a gap funding, how to look at apartment complexes, what to look for when you're actually at an apartment complex, uh, what to look at at a, at a deal, walk through a fire damage deal, walk through a whole thing of using a fire damage deal through fire insurance. I mean, we got all kinds of stuff in there and it's all for free. We're not pitching anything. I'm not selling anything. It's just giving back to you guys. So Rock get a hold of me personally or go through the AZ flip, guys. Rock and roll, man. Hey, love it, dude. Yes, thank you. Great Appreciate show, it. Yeah. Yeah, right. Appreciate you for having me, guys. All right, guys. Hey. Make sure that you uh, stay tuned. And before you guys leave, two things. Um, make sure that you, if you've not done it, I always say this, go to the uh, kahunawealthbuilders.com and get my quick start video series, okay? That's going to teach you how to raise private money and get you all the things you need how to find fat deals. I've got a whole uh, line of videos that I've created for you. Um, also, um, go to iTunes, because I love it. I mean, I, I get reviews all the time. I love sharing those. Uh, I'm gonna go back, when we redo post-production, I'm gonna come back and mm -hmm. shoot, uh, sh uh, put a couple of those up in the very front of this, uh, uh, this video that we just did, because it really does mean a lot. And honestly, it, it helps so much in that iTunes rankings. And we really want to get this message shared with everybody, because I mean, it's, it's a mission. Like, listen, I'm telling you right now, if people understood the power of OPM and the power of, of cash flow, yes, and what the cash flow life can do, it will eliminate stress. Oh God, yes. Like it eliminates the. Um, it just it's what every it's what every investor strives to do, but unfortunately, most of them turn on the stupid TV mm -hmm. and they think fix and flip. This whole thing of buying and selling, buying and selling, being in the highest tax bracket, mm -hmm. being a trader yep. with a T, yeah. not a D, because <laughs> they're a trader to their craft. They wanted to be investors, but they're not. Mm -hmm. A true investor, is when you passive. start, is passive. That's what it means. And, and we've said this before, but fixing and flipping at the end of the day is still just a job. It's just a job. It's, it's a good job. Yeah. It's better than working at a factory somewhere, yeah. but nonetheless, it's still a job. So help me share the message. Get out on iTunes, post, repost, do whatever it takes. Help me share this message because it's that important. You guys have a wonderful day. And remember, your paradise is possible. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> Loved it, brother. <laughs> Loved hey. it.